Welcome to evening meditation, uh, the last Sunday before Advent, I think. And um, yeah, I'm going to be picking up something in Advent. I've um, been reading a, about a book from Rowan Williams, which I think I'm going to order and, and use as a, an Advent study, if you like, or meditation framework. And that um, draws on Eastern spiritual tradition and particularly making the point that um, we don't know things as we ought to know them. We don't see things as we ought to see them. Our natural passions, and Rowan Williams in the book I think talks about the, the passions and how these are perfectly natural or normal things but we can become captive to them and they can result in us pushing things away pushing others away or trying to consume things and others so creating boundaries and uh, leading to a, a a lack of connectedness which again is one of our ongoing themes i think connectedness he says, he points out that life in the spirit is life beyond the boundaries erected between ourselves and each other, ourselves and God, and even between ourselves and ourselves. Since the divine spirit, even in Romans 8, Paul says, the divine spirit draws out of us what we did not even know we desired. So for now, we come into a space where there are no boundaries, where we can intentionally let go of thoughts that divide and worries that reduce us. So I invite you just to go through your own routine, your own ritual of adjusting where you're sitting, finding a comfortable place, um, being alert, being attentive, being aware, noticing your connections to the ground, to the chair, to the sofa. Sitting upright if you can and bringing a focus to the breath. Just the simple act of becoming aware that you are breathing. Life giving. Universal. Always there. So take a deep breath in through the nose. and out through the mouth and again deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth focusing on that movement maybe focusing on the sound on the sensation you have in your nostrils as the air comes in, maybe the shape of your lips as you breathe out. Attaching a sense of gratitude to that in-breath. Almost drinking in the breath with thankfulness. further developing an imagery of the breath maybe imagine 
the breath coming into you as a as a warm light, as a glow. And if you can visualize that glow passing down the body, down the windpipe to the lungs, and then suffusing through the body. So we're attaching some warmth to the breath. Attaching some light. And maybe we could imagine energy too. Reviving us. Just that simple action of breathing in, warming and lighting and energizing. And finally, let's attach to it with the breath coming in the breath, the wind, the spirit of God, bringing in a sense of calm. So we breathe in calmness. And we breathe out and let go of any worry. We breathe in joy, maybe even imagine the word joy, breathing it in and breathing out anxiety or fear. Just continue with a few more rounds of that breath using whichever imagery best helps you. Just some one or two thoughts around <clears throat> the consequences of not seeing things as we ought to, allowing ourselves to be misdirected. We're all too well aware, I think, of situations that another recent coming to light of uh, abuse in the Church of England resignation of the Archbishop of Canterbury situations when leadership and oversight 
are used to shore up or to support the status or ego of individuals or organisations rather than empowering others. Where humankind declines to follow the leading of God, human beings lose the capacity to distinguish right from wrong, truth from falsehood. Societies fall into division and injustice. Human relationships grow shallow and manipulative. And sadly, this isn't the case just in the world, but the church is as prone to this as well. So through Advent, we'll explore this further and how seeing things more clearly, knowing ourselves, growing, spiritual formation is a word I quite like. We could also talk of discipleship or simply becoming more Christ-like. Why should we embark on this journey? Rowan Williams, and his language isn't always easy, but he says, we can only imagine that there is what is not God, because God's abundant bliss is itself a sort of longing. We might almost say for that joy to be shared. And on growing, he says, if we're not growing, we're shrinking in the spiritual life. We can't just stand still. To be growing, I think, is to be open. To be open to the future. To be open to the leading of the Spirit. Whereas to be standing still and not growing is, I think, to be closed to the promptings of the divine. So as always, we have a chance to look at ourselves. Being present means that we're paying attention to what's happening in the moment. What has happened in the past is literally now a memory. And what happens tomorrow is still unknown. So just a few minutes to be in the moment, be conscious of any thoughts we have, but just to look back over this day. A practice we, we sometimes call uh, the examine. Just to almost let the day, the scenes of the day pass across the retina of your mind and notice any particular incidents, any experiences. Anything that was particularly good and wholesome. Any encounters and how did we respond or react in those encounters? Did we react defensively? with some self-justification? Or did we respond wisely? Having the interests of the other at heart.
another useful practice is is that of practicing gratitude so maybe in this day already there are two or three things that strike you as being things that you're grateful for One of Father Richard Raw's colleagues writes about connectedness and listening that we covered uh, through October. He writes, get to work on those divisions where we've built barriers or where barriers occur. Build, bridge, belong. This call for belonging is not about saving ourselves as individuals. Belonging is about saving our very humanity. If you are not thriving, then I am not thriving. If you do not have peace, then I do not have peace. If you do not belong, then I myself do not belong. We may have heard the expression, probably used by Rowan Williams, Ubuntu an African expression which means humanity and I am because we are. When we truly see one another we literally become. The challenges to belong, to be connected cannot be resolved in isolation but can only be resolved when we are existing together across differences. Surely this is the opposite of the modern tend to individualism. You do you and I'll do me. We have to be willing to meet each other. To make room for each other. To listen to each other. And this of course means letting go of our own self-justification, our own egos, our own small selves. And so we'll go to our longer period of silence with uh, music from Salt of the Sound. I've not used this one before. It's called Free. Give me a moment. I'll be content. I've been watching and waiting. I come wide open. You give me joy, you give me freedom, you give me hope, you give me reason, you give me strength in every season, you set me free. So we use the silence for breath 
or taking the words from the song, you give me joy, you give me freedom, or becoming the observer of our own thoughts and letting them go, or perhaps thinking on gratitude and reviewing the day. The gong will take us in and bring us out of our silence.
So we come out of our silence. Gently returning ourselves to the room. Perhaps stretching a little. Opening our eyes if they've been closed. <clears throat> And some closing words, a prayer from Andrew Rudd, The Net. From my scattering I am gathered in. From my grasping I have let go. From my anxiety I am held, secure as a swaddled child. What I hold, holds me. What I touch, touches me. What I love, loves me. Captured, enmeshed, I am free. Amen.